like in this hoodie, you could confuse me for a girl who does some sports. You could. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all doing really well. Little change of setup today. We're getting cozy. I believe scientifically it is the beginning of autumn, although my sweat levels would suggest it's still very much summer. So I thought we'd go for something slightly more relaxed today. Something a little bit different, something that doesn't leave you all wondering whether I'm gonna fall backwards down the stairs and break my neck at any moment. I used to do it a lot more, but when you think about it, I don't actually really share all that much about my life anymore. I'm basically just a court jester wearing clothes these days. Um, but who is the court jester? What's he doing in his spare time? Where did he come from? What's he got going on behind the scenes? It is technically autumn now, so that seems as good a time as any to get a little bit cosy and for me to snuggle down on the sofa, hopefully you're doing the same, and put my big jumper on, grab an enormous coffee, quite frankly an alarming amount of caffeine going on inside here, and like old pals who haven't seen each other for a while, which I guess we probably haven't in this kind of chilled out way. So I guess this is kind of the first instalment of what will inevitably be a lot of videos about buying a house. I know. <laughs> I've mentioned it a couple of times in passing on here that it's something we were starting to think about. Um, we, if you don't know, is me and my boyfriend, Adam. We've been chatting about the possibility of buying our own place for a little while now. Um, and a few months ago, we decided to start getting the ball rolling a little bit because I loved the idea of it, but I was quite frankly terrified by the entire process. So we just kept putting it off. Neither of us could be bothered to sit down and learn about it. But then, and anyone who has ever moved or rented or bought anywhere, something just clicks and you fall down a black hole of your entire life just revolving around checking property websites. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened a few months ago. Um, I started to see right move behind my own eyelids. All I could possibly think about was new property that had been added to the market. <laughs> so after a lot of chatting about it, a lot of slightly weird discussions because Adam and I are like a very, very chilled out couple. Like we like are just laughing all the time and we very rarely apart from a few things because obviously everybody's got serious stuff that happens we very rarely talk about anything serious so it does feel a bit like we've been kind of like playing at being grown-ups with this whole process it's hilarious like we find ourselves in situations and we're like what <laughs> what do we do about this so before we went into it all we had some very honest and frank discussions about money which is always quite tricky to do, even when you've been with someone for years and years. It's strange, but it felt really good. I really recommend doing that. Like, even if you're not buying a house, I really recommend sitting down with your partner sometimes and just being like, look, this is my financial situation. What's yours like? Are we in similar boats? Are we in different boats? Let's have an understanding about how we spend money together. Once that was out of the way, the next thing on the list was to try and decide where we want to live which is an equally difficult thing to talk about. It's very easy for me because I work from home. So as long as I have like semi easy access into central London for meetings and stuff every few days, that's fine. That's chill. I'll pretty much live wherever. I could pretty much do this job from anywhere in the whole world. I did it from the Wirral for a while. I've done it all over London. I did it from Malaysia, but Adam has a very normal city job. And that means that his commute is, if not the top priority, a major priority because like I know when I used to commute it used to literally suck the soul out of my inner being. I would leave the office in such a terrific mood and then get home and literally not want to see another living soul for as long as I live. But as someone I love very much I don't want him to have to you know devote two hours every morning and every evening to being surrounded by very grumpy sweaty city boys. And just because I'm kind of ready to move a bit further out of central London now and take a bit of a break from crazy busy central London. I don't want to have to make his day a lot harder and a lot longer just because I fancy living somewhere a bit more peaceful. We ruled out a lot of areas for each other. Like there was a lot of parts of London that I don't want to move back to. I spent a lot of time in certain bits of London when I was at uni with my ex-boyfriend and stuff that are not filled with nice memories for me and I don't I don't want to go back and live there. Like I'm done with those bits of London and I associate them with being 
a sad girl. And then because Adam is from London, there was a lot of areas that he didn't want to move to because it felt like he was kind of stepping back to the places where he'd spent all his Saturdays as a teenager. So the whole thing has just been a lot of being very honest and like communicating really nicely, which has been really good actually. Like the whole process is pretty stressful, but actually I feel like we've started to communicate loads better. Six or seven, maybe different little places that we were considering, basically different train stations that we were considering that were commutable and that were nice areas with like high streets and a nice atmosphere that were also, small detail, vaguely in our price range. Turns out there's a lot of places in London that are not in our price range. <laughs> and basically from the first viewing that we went to go and see, things got stressful. <laughs> I like to provide as much stress on myself as physically possible at any opportunity. And I seem to just do that very naturally. I don't even try that hard. I don't try to find stress. Stress just finds me. I'm a stress magnet. I'm a stress head. Stress, oh yes. The first viewing that we went to was a little house which I spotted online and as soon as I saw it, I got a little bit of a, like a tingly feeling in my soul about it. Little house, little cottage, actually. Um, the most immaculate little cottage you've ever seen, really close to the station. Just looked like it could be a little drawing on the front of a tin of shortbread. Like, just the cutest thing you've ever seen. Went to see it on a Saturday morning, walked around the property, and we're both just like, this is beautiful. Like we left and Adam was like, I can really see us living there, I can tell that you love it. Adam's really sweet as well. He's basically just like, as long as you love it, then I'm gonna be happy because you'll be happy. So like, he's very easy going with the whole thing. And he was like, I can really see us living there. But the thing was, it was the first house that we'd been to see together as a couple in this whole journey of trying to buy somewhere. So it just felt a bit mad that that would be the one that we would be considering buying. We didn't want to rush it. We didn't know how the whole business worked. And we had this horrible mad estate agent just being like, are you going to put an offer in? Are you going to put an offer in? It's going to sell very quickly. I could tell that you loved it. Blah, 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 blah. And to us, it just felt absolutely mental that we could be spending literally our entire life savings on our first home and be putting an offer on it without going to see it again or taking a mum to see it with us. Anyway, it probably doesn't take a genius to figure out what happened here. In that London market, things move very quickly and that one sold before we got to go and see it again. And I read the email from the estate agent telling me that that happened and I was in a coffee shop and <laughs> I cried. I'm a very like emotion led person and like my emotions make all my decisions for me basically. And I, I get like feelings about things and I really trust my gut about things. And when we saw that house, even though it was the first one we'd seen, like I had, I just romanticized it so much and it just felt like the home that I'd always wanted. So I instantly fell in love with it. I instantly started thinking like, oh, we could put this here and we could do this. So it felt wrong that someone else was, ha was having that house. So I was really, really, gutted about that. A stinker of a start for the whole thing and I literally said to Adam, I was like, I don't think I even want to do this anymore. Like, that was the house. That was the one. Obviously, he's a lot less insane than I am. So he had a much more, like, level-headed approach to it and he was like, look, it was the first one we saw. Maybe we just got a bit carried away. It probably wasn't right. We talked ourselves back into, like, getting back on the wagon and seeing what else we could find. The first cottage, which was robbed from us. Oh, and I'll tell you what else I did as well. I was so in love with that house um, that I just thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. So I sent them a card. <laughs> I'm so weird. I didn't know their names or anything. I just wrote, hello, exclamation mark. I was like, this probably seems very strange and I'm sorry if this feels like an invasion of privacy. I just had to reach out to you because my boyfriend and I came to see your house. We absolutely loved it. It felt so special. I wrote my email address on there and just said, look, if anything changes, if the buyer pulls out, if you decide you don't want to go ahead with them, just drop me an email. And they actually did reply. They sent me an email the day after I posted the card and it was the sweetest email. It was so lovely. She was like, oh, I'm so touched. It really is a special place. We've got so many happy memories here. But since then, there's been other developments. But anyway, that all's well that ends well. That was a very nice turn in the tail. And it just goes to show if you feel, if you feel like you want to just reach out and do the most, 
reach out and do the most. You never know what will happen. The second one that we went to see was on the same day that we went to see that little cottage. Very different style of property though, because we just wanted to go and see like a big variety of stuff and figure out what we like and what we don't like. Because every single one you go and see, you learn something new. So we went to see a ground floor flat after that one, um, because let me just tell you, it's been a real eye opener for what you can actually afford in London. Like we are in a very abnormal position really because of YouTube. There is no even slight realm of possibility that I could afford to do this if YouTube hadn't worked, if this hadn't happened. I've basically lived off the money for the past couple of years that my writing has made me, my freelance writing, that's paid the rent and then everything I've made from YouTube has gone straight into savings. And that's meant that I've been able to accumulate savings that in my maddest dreams and nightmares, <laughs> I never even considered that I would be able to accumulate. So, cheers for watching, really appreciate it. Uh, you've truly changed my life in several ways, but being able to buy a house because of YouTube, bit mad. We'll talk about that another time. What I was trying to say there was um, I kind of went into this thinking that we would be able to afford to buy a house, specifically a house. <laughs> Turns out I was very much deluded and uh, houses in London cost at least a million pounds most of the time, which I mean, nope. If we lived anywhere else in the country, maybe yes. If we moved up north, for instance, where I'm from on the Wirral, the equivalent of what we're buying here would get us literally like a farm mansion up on the Wirral. So, solid life decisions. <laughs> as well as going to see little houses, we also wanted to see flats as well to compare the size difference, compare like the quality difference, all that kind of stuff. So we went to see this ground floor flat, which was actually really lovely. The main things I didn't like about it were that it was on quite a busy road and obviously I have a little kitty cat. I didn't like the kitchen because it didn't have a window. All the other rooms were so lovely but the kitchen didn't have a window so it just felt a bit dark and dank and stuff. And the kitchen is like Adam's main concern because he's the one that does all the cooking. He loves cooking and he wants to start some kind of food blog or something so we really want a nice kitchen that's light and bright and airy where he can do that and really kind of thrive and enjoy spending time in the kitchen. So that wasn't right. Number three was a big one. So in the same area again, we went to see number three, which was a, not a ground floor flat, like a basement flat like the other one was, but like a level ground flat. We actually nearly went for this one. Um, this was a strong contender. So as soon as we both walked in, we were literally like, wow, like this is beautiful mainly like the main living room space it had this amazing bay window i wish i could show you like videos and pictures and stuff but it feels a bit weird it's a bit invasive maybe to do that i'm not gonna do that that's weird but i wish i could the couple that owned it at the time they were both like designers or architects or something so it had just been done to perfection. We then went back for a second viewing with Adam's parents just to kind of get a second opinion on it really because it's so hard to trust yourself. Like we've been laughing about it saying like it's so hard to even believe what you think about somewhere when you've never done this before. Like you don't really know what you're looking for. And as soon as I walked back into it and I didn't have that initial like, oh my God, this is stunning. It didn't feel right. A lot of the time as well, when properties are advertised as two bedroom in London, that ain't two bedroom, honey. That is a one bedroom and a room to put one shoe. <laughs> My main thing about that place as well was it didn't have a private garden. And I have been desperate for just a little bit, like the smallest little bit of outside space pretty much ever since we moved into this flat. When I came to view this flat with the estate agent, we were told that there was a communal roof terrace. So I thought, oh, that'd be nice. There'll be somewhere that I can go and go out and read my book and have a coffee and sit and edit outside if I want to. The day we moved in, we learned that that terrace was indeed not communal and belonged to the penthouse flat. So for the whole time that we've been in this flat, which is two years, three years, I don't know. <laughs> Just been so desperate to have even a little patio 
somewhere we can have a table and chairs where we can sit outside with a coffee in the morning. But what I also then didn't realise was, yeah, communal gardens are absolutely fine. They're normally absolutely stunning, but actually, then you have to see which flat in the building then opens directly onto the garden because only one of them probably does. And so this gorgeous flat that we loved with the big high ceilings and the lovely living room and stuff, it didn't have direct access to the garden. So you had to leave the flat, go out the hallway, go around the front door, then go around the whole building just to access the garden. And I thought, well, if I've got to do that, then I'm not going to take my coffee out there every morning, am I? I'm never going to do that. So there was lots of factors. And on a second viewing, we just decided that it wasn't the one. And I think we were, we really disappointed that estate agent because he thought he'd got his commission there. A little side note story about that estate agent. Uh, he sold a property to Tom Holland, which I was very excited about. <laughs> That's Spider-Man for anyone who doesn't know. The one I went to see after that was then a maisonette. It had its own little private garden, which was really, really sweet and quite big actually. And the estate agent was really twisting my arm and being like, oh, you could build like an out office in here. I was like, I could build an out office here. You're right. I'm so easily swayed by estate agent chat, but the flat itself, oh my God, it was a project. And through the whole process, to be honest, I, I'm quite keen for a project. Like I like the idea of kind of doing somewhere up a little bit. A little lick of paint, new floor maybe, just a little bit of TLC. I'm quite up for doing that. Never done anything like that before. So it would be nice to have somewhere that needs a little bit of love and care, you know? It was too much of a project and I knew that Adam wouldn't really fancy that, to be honest. Because Adam, if it was up to Adam, we'd be moving into like the ship shape shiniest new build. So we've had to like meet in the middle as well there because I was literally looking at like auction properties that have like <laughs> the ceiling falling off and like beams hanging out that poke you in the eye as you walk in and like rats scuttling around. Oh, we saw another one as well. We saw a little detached cottage, which was so gorgeous. It was right by the station. It was quite unusual because it was almost kind of plonked behind the, the main road itself and you had to go down a little alleyway behind someone else's house to get to it. So it was nice that it was quite secluded and stuff, but my mum kind of pointed out like, you do have to think about things like, what if there was a fire? Like how would they extinguish the fire easily? I never think about stuff like that. And that one, the rooms were tiny and when i say tiny i mean i don't even think that they would have been long enough to film my like try on videos in them so that one just wasn't right but as soon as i walked in it i was like this is so cute it looked like a little center parks villa after we'd seen that many adam was kind of saying to me like we, maybe we should have a little bit of a look somewhere else and just see like what else there is let's have a look on the other side of london these ones over on the new side weren't quite as much my cup of tea to be honest um, not quite as characterful. I really like something. As you might be able to tell if you've ever kind of had a look around this flat in my old videos, I like something that's a bit quirky and a bit weird and quite characterful. But there was one place that my mum found actually, she sent me over the link. She was like, this is really unusual. You should take a look at this. And it was unbelievable. Oh my God, this place. And I really fell in love with this because it was just, I've never seen anywhere like it. So the main building itself was an old Victorian mansion and it had all the grounds with it and it was like a big communal garden. And then this mansion had been split up into four big flats. The one that we were looking at was then in a separate outbuilding and the outbuilding was the old coach house to what had been the mansion. And it was just this amazing open space, like gorgeous wooden floorboards, huge, like beamed, pointed high ceiling. But the thing about it was, was that it was very unusual. So there was a lot that could be wrong with it. I mean, it could have literally been falling down for all I know. I wouldn't have a clue, but it was top of our budget and it needed a hell of a lot of work. It was pretty gross because the bloke who'd been living in it for the last couple of years was in the army or something so he was never even there so there was like massive cobwebs and like everything was falling apart a bit and like it was just it was just a bit of a shithole to be honest but like the building itself the structure itself it just could have been unbelievable we were like let's go and get a coffee and we can have a chat about it went on google maps to investigate where the nearest coffee shop was and there was, and this is no exaggeration, nothing for like miles. Like it was at least 
a 25, 30 minute walk, even to a coffee shop or even a corner shop. So say you got home after a really long day and you realise you didn't even have any tea bags, you couldn't even have a cup of tea, you'd have to either walk for half an hour or we would have to buy a car, which we don't have a car at the moment. We had to rule that one out, which was very unexpected because when I went to see that, I was like, I think this could be it. Like, this is unreal. We looked on Deliveroo and basically the only thing on Deliveroo was a Budgeons, which if you don't know what a Budgeons is, I didn't know what a Budgeons was till I moved to London. It's, it's literally a corner shop. It's like the tiniest little convenience store. If that's top of your Deliveroo, I mean, that's not a hip hop happening kind of place. So as you can probably imagine, by this point, I was starting to lose the will to live. That's a lot of properties to go and see because it's not like we can just hop in the car and drive to these places. And it's not like all these places are local in our local area either. They were all a half an hour journey there, a half an hour journey back, a 40 minute journey there, a 40 minute journey back. And it was literally taking over my entire life. But here's the twist in the tale because there is an area of London that I have wanted to live in for ages now, um, but it's very expensive. It's very beautiful and it's very expensive. It's the kind of area that like I envisioned I would live in when I moved here when I was 18 and instead ended up in pretty much the entire opposite. It's just what I really kind of always dreamed of, um, but have never ever been able to afford it, obviously, because if you wanna live somewhere like that, Sounds like you've got to be a bajillionaire to enjoy the privilege. But I'd kind of been daring to dream and keeping a little eye on it anyway, just in case, and then just getting disappointed every single day because obviously there was nothing in our price range. But then one day, a little house popped up. And in my months and months and months of searching, I had not seen anything pop up in our price range that was a little two bedroom house in that area. So I literally jumped on it. Here's a fun fact about me. I hate talking on the phone, but for this place, I called and I made a viewing the very next day. I said, this isn't gonna last very long, so I'm gonna jump on it. We're not having another cottage number one here. And as soon as I started walking through the area, I just literally fell in love with the place. Like I felt, it, it's just beautiful. And I, I haven't lived anywhere beautiful. I gave myself half an hour to explore the area before the viewing. I've tried to do that each time, give myself some time before the viewing to like have half an hour to wander around the area and see what it's like. And I went to view the house itself. And as soon as I walked through the door, I knew, I knew, like I knew. It's got its own little front garden. It's got its own little back garden with a shed and a lawn and a patio. And interestingly with this one, which is kind of the thing that made me realize like we need to go for this, like the inside of it, I wanna change everything. Like there's a few features, like there's a fireplace in the living room and there's little ornate fireplaces in each bedroom, which I absolutely love. Everything else needs to go. It's grubby, it's a bit gross. It needs a good scrub. Everything needs updating, but the actual like building itself, the road itself, the area, the, the structure, that's what I loved and that I feel is really special and that I'm drawn to rather than like being swayed by how someone has decorated their house because it is so easy to get swept up in that. Like even if you think you're not, you had to give yourself a reality check and be like, if this was literally an empty shell with just plastered walls and like bare floorboards, would I still wanna live here? So we decided with this one that we just had to go for it and get it done and get it secured and then we'll see how we get on with it. We went in very low to start with and we kind of knew that we were being a bit cheeky with it. But at the end of the day, it needs a lot done to it. That one got rejected. We went a little bit higher and rather than being an outright rejection, the seller then came back and said, look, if we can compromise and meet here, you got a deal. So, we bought a house. <laughs> I know, what the hell? I can't believe it either. What? We, we had our offer accepted. So I guess we bought a house. It's really weird. I really ummed and ahed about telling you this at this point because I've got friends who are buying at the moment or have already bought and everything that could go wrong seems to go wrong for everybody. My classic brain is 
literally just assuming that actually this isn't our house at all and it's definitely gonna go wrong and something's gonna happen and we're not gonna get it. Something's gonna go wrong with the mortgage or the seller's gonna pull out or the solicitors will find something, I don't know. Something will go wrong. That's how I feel right now because it's just the little house that is right for us. So I feel like something is bound to happen. But I feel like that's an important part of this whole big chapter that's going on right now. And if I'm gonna document the whole thing, which I will be doing whenever it happens, then this is a big part of it. And I like, I feel really excited. And obviously it's a really big, exciting thing that we're doing. And I've always shared this kind of thing with you guys. And so it feels weird to have not told you. So I'm gonna tell you that we bought a house. <laughs> like we might get a survey done in a couple of weeks and find that it's, it's built on an old secret coal mine that's full of anthrax and asbestos. <laughs> I just can't believe it really. I can't, I, like I, ca I cannot, I cannot believe that this is happening. And um, it feels very, very surreal. And I just, I just feel so, so lucky. Obviously there will be proper moving vlogs one day when we move and this all starts like actually happening. There will of course be moving vlogs because I loved doing those last time. I don't expect us to be like knocking down walls and all that kind of stuff because mainly we just can't afford it. <laughs> we can't afford to like gut a place and do it all in one go. Like it'll be a really slow savings process to just do one room at a time, I think. You will of course be coming along for the ride and I hope you guys are excited for home content. Finally, something other than me parading around in pairs of jeans that don't fit me properly. So I think that's all I've got to tell you today. I just wanted to let you know and share news that's making me very happy and stressed and anxious all in one big ball at the moment. But now I can be a bit more honest about it all and keep you updated with how it goes. Be prepared for disasters. Be prepared for it to all go wrong. But I do think that with like moving and new homes, whether you're renting or you're buying or you're moving out or whatever, it's like the prime example of if it's meant to be, then it'll be. And if it's not, then your circumstances will change and you'll go down a different path. So that's the attitude that I'm gonna keep going until we shut that front door for the first time and we're in with all our stuff and the cat wondering what the hell's going on. I'm not gonna count my chickens, but technically we've sort of bought a house. That was a lot. Is this interesting? Probably not. Um, and I don't mean for this to be braggy at all. I just really enjoy sharing my life milestones on here, whether it's been uni, new jobs, makeups and breakups and new relationships, moving in with Adam for the first time, everything like that, I've always documented it on here. If you've bought a house and you've got any major tips for solicitors and all those things that I don't understand what I'm even doing, everything, every single step I'm doing, I've had to call my mum and be like, what is this? What am I even emailing about? When I was emailing solicitors the other day, I was like, what am I asking for? I was just like, dear solicitors, please help me. How much please? It turns out conveyancing is a thing. Conveyancing. That's a word that's now in my lexicon. Still don't really know what it means. I think they basically double check that all is well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's really nice to just sit and chat to you actually and not have to worry about being funny or anything. Just fill you in on what's going on. Um, it's nice to just like reconnect, isn't it? Of course, I'll be hanging around in the comments to have a chat about all this with you guys. I can't wait to hear what you think. If you enjoyed this one, or if you're just looking forward to all the moving content and the home content and all that kind of good stuff, then uh, chuck me a little thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well if you're new around here. I'll probably be putting more little mini updates and stuff over on Instagram, so make sure you follow me over there. And Twitter as well, they're both at Lucy Jane Wood. And I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye. Mwah.